Hi, and welcome to this video on how to set up and use the Crash Reporter tool. If you've just downloaded the application and started it, you will see this screen. This, allows, this can allow you to test the Crash Reporter tool, but before starting the test, you need to set up certain options. So if you open the Visual Basic environment and select the module TSC Air Rep underscore main, you can see some information about the license. We can scroll down to where we can see all the settings for the error reporter. Over here, you need to type in the email that the error report should be sent to. So, developer at gmail.com, your email. Here, you can specify the name of your application. My own application. You can also specify your real name, the name of the developer. This will be used throughout the error reporter, so it's important that you use the correct names. If you want to use Outlook, that is the default setting, but that of course requires that the user has Outlook on his or her computer. You can also use the CDO to send a message through Gmail. In that case, you need to supply a valid Gmail email with a correct password, of course. The default setting is to always take a screenshot, and the default is to always include the screenshot. There's a setting here whether or not you want the background dimmed when an error occurs. Finally, you can see the version of the error report tool here. Maybe, hopefully, I'll be releasing updates as I get more input. So let's give it a go. You can actually use this form to test that you have the settings correct. Just click the test crash reporter, and you can now see what happens. Up here, that's the name of the application gets written up here. An unexpected error has occurred. This application has already read in the username from the Windows login. Here, the user can describe what was happening. Testing. There are a short window for the error details, that's the error message. Further down, there's the log that the application has collected for us. A lot of valuable information about what has happened. And finally, at the bottom, we can see screenshots. There's one screenshot of the application window itself, and a screenshot for each form that was open at the time of the error. Down here, there's a submit button, and you can see that the developer name I entered previously has been written directly on the button. The user can select whether he wants to submit, or he can close the form without submitting. You can also see here that the screen has been dimmed with a nice blue color. That color is, of course, something you can modify as well. Let's, let's try hitting the Submit button. The user will get a confirmation saying that the email was sent. Just press OK, and you can now continue with whatever the application was doing. Let's go check the mail. Here we can see the mail as it is received. It contains a log file, it contains a screenshot, and the screenshot of the form as well. This will make it very easy to see what the user was doing. Part of the information that is collected is which form was active when the error occurred, what was the active control. So this is basically telling us what was the last control that the user was in. In this case, it was the command button, command cause error. Sometimes the active control can have a parent form that is not the active form if the active control is in a subform. That's why this will often be the same. You can see various other bits of information what version of access was used, what was the time of error, what was the Windows username, 
so on so forth, and lots of other valuable information to help you debug. Let's just have a look at the objects in this database. So let's close this form and we can look over here to see the objects here. We have four modules, four forms, and a table which stores the information. The form dim, that is what specifies the color to use to dim the background. If you change the color in here, that will be the color used as the background dimmer. There's the main form to submit the error. Looks like this. And this is the subform. This is the test form. That's the form you've already seen. And this form is not necessary, but all the other objects needs to be imported into your database. To use it, you need of still to have a regular error handler. And then when an error occurs, there might be some errors that you expect and know how to handle, so you do that. Then you can have a case else for those errors that you did not prepare for, that were not anticipated, and you can use this function, TSC, report unexpected error, to email information about the error. This will take a few arguments, such as the procedure name, the module name, and any custom info you might wish to add. Note that these are all optional. If you don't include them, the tool will still continue to work. If you use error lines in your code, the error line number will also be included in the error report. That was all I had to share with you for now. I hope you will find my error report tool useful. And if you have any feedback, please share it on my site, thesmileycoder.com.